put two, 39 inches, you can put two or three. This is one, you definitely can only do two unless you have what they call a connecting strut. And I'm gonna show you why, because I'm gonna mount this one like if I was gonna put three on the seat. Okay, so you notice we have a different color straps. So of course it's easy to tell that this goes in the front, because that's where it is, and these will go through the bite of the seat. So we're just gonna shove those down. And this is a easy, the, the star seat is kind of easy to install because it's just a straight clipping system. And everything's color coordinated, which we like color coordinated stuff, right? Let's see if you get on the phone. Yeah, that's great. <laughs> Big thing is, is just to make sure all your straps, once again, are straight, that they don't get twisted as you feed them down through the seat. Um, <clears throat> So, let's get this back on. All right, so if I had to put three of these on this seat, because, again, because of the base, this is where this seat would sit. Remember when we were talking about the curve of the seat? No matter how hard I tighten this down, you see what I have? See this space? So this is not a good place for this. All right, so if we have two, we're simply going to shift it in to make sure we're on the flat. Um, you can put three of these on a seat. Once again, they have a connecting strap that basically it lays across the top of the seat is all it is. It's a piece of webbing. That's Velcro. It lays across the top of the seat. You put it under the all of your star seats. Then you put the straps up over them. And it, all it does is come and then Velcro together. And it keeps this kind of all as one unit with the other ones. Right? But only if you absolutely have to do three do you have to do it. As long as you're at least two and you can pull it to the flat part. You always want to be on the flat part, all right? And then it's a simple clip method. Again, we pull those all the way out to make it easier to reach. You just clip them in. I pull them to a snug as I do it just to keep it, keep them up out of my way. You don't want to pinch them down. <laughs> Reach! Oh, I did. I can't. Yeah. Where are you when we need you to drive? <laughs> <laughs> On a bus? Sitting in my desk? No. <laughs> She's driving? Again, that gray strap's made for people to keep this from sliding back and forth across the street. So you just want to make sure it's the street. Across the street. I just want to go across the street. Apparently, Chick Fil A's. That's what it is. I love it. That's it. Yeah. Across the seat. Yeah. So you just want to make sure it's snug enough. Again, not crushing. Um, make sure that you're not, along with the vest, uh, the seat bottom needs to be at the bottom of the seat. Make sure you're not pulling these straps so tight that it's levitating. All right, make sure you keep it at the seat. If you do the black ones, the side ones first, right, and tighten it down, it keeps the bottom. If the you bottom do the middle down. one first, it pulls the it seat It pulls up. the seat up. Very good, good tip. So, uh, you want to make sure, now notice uh, the way that our strapping is. So, where are we going to cut this one? Because we have, we don't have one strap, right? We got three Sorry. different straps here. Where do you think we should cut it? Below, below the buckles. Below the buckles. That's exactly right. Down below these buckles. Because this one is a little more cumbersome if you had to unlatch it because there's so many different latches. There's three latches. All right, so you just want to reach down, slice, slice, and slice. Let this whole thing will pick up and go with the child. And that's okay. Now, it lets the, them off the bus. They can take this with them, and that's no problem. Now, um, on the star seat, uh, this extra little pad in here is velour. So we need to make sure that once again that we're not um, wiping it down with anything crazy because it's, you know, the word's like a cloth, so it absorbs, <coughs> which is good and bad, right? Yeah. <laughs> when we're talking about children. <laughs> um, but um, these are replaceable 
you can just get these inserts. Good, because just I need in some. case you want to know that you can just purchase this okay. piece. Are they washable? Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I'm saying though. I mean, yeah. is it is it you are, said the you webbing not, is like warm water. Right. Could you warm water those? You can warm water on? wash it, you just can't put any detergents, right. you know. You just gotta be careful about what kind of detergents. Because again, um it's it's still a safety thing. You will break this down and remember the Lord's like a there's a foam in there. Yeah. So it gets funky. Yeah. Um, when if it stays wet. If there's any moisture in it at all, it's going to build bacteria. If you have these on the bus and they get wet, you definitely want to make sure that you take this off. It's Velcro. Mm -hmm. It's just Velcro down. Take that whole thing off and let it sit in the sun and get it air dry. Because this is covered in that boar material, but it is a foam in there. Mm -hmm. And that will hold that moisture. So you want to make sure that it's good and dry. It's, you know, it's not like the straight webbing. Webbing, when it's dry, you can tell it's dry. This could have just a little drop of moisture in there, which will build that bacteria. Mm -hmm. Well, we also things. learned this summer it holds food really yes. good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so, and bubble gum. Uh, that's what I meant in the letter I sent out to you guys. If you're allowing your students to eat, you've got to clean up after them. Mm -hmm. I have several star seeds that that's why I'm going to have to buy some of those. The, the lure on them are ruined. They were chocolate. Is all melted down in all the and on yeah, album. bubble gum. Um, yeah, so I mean, my thing about eating and drinking on the bus, no, no, I don't water. care if they have water. If it's water, water yeah, that's they fine. need water, yeah. But when it comes to, I'll be the first one to tell you, I'm all about some goodie bags. But that's on Friday, and that's them getting off the bus. Yep. <laughs> so take it home. Yeah, I, I don't let them eat. The main reason I don't. I had a student when I was a pair pro that his mother, she was uh, three years old. They were on their way home from the grocery store. She had just got on the interstate. He was screaming and pitching fit because he was so hungry, and she gave him, which was a bad choice, a raw hot dog. Oh, well, he got choked on it, and because she couldn't get over fast enough he died. to help him out, he didn't die, he lived. But that little baby was paralyzed, brain basically brain dead, for the rest of his life. And that's just always stuck with me. So, unless you're prepared to take that risk on the choking on your bus, I would keep it with, you're getting off the bus, here you go, let yeah. mom and dad deal with it. Yeah. Well, you know, they're not no. no, they're not. Yeah. All right. Did anybody have any more questions before we move past the seat? Strapping, webbing, anything. And when we're all done too, I do have webbing up here. If no if you have never ever cut yourself out of a seatbelt in an emergency situation. Um, then I always bring webbing with me, and I always suggest that you come up and cut a piece of webbing. You need to know how much pressure does it take. Do I have my hand at the right angle? Um, you know, I, I suggest you do it. If you've never cut yourself out of a, a belt, you need to come up and cut a couple pieces. See, see, you know, that if you try, I mean, sit there and try to do that. See, you can, you can get it and see out of a very slight angle. Um, do it, but when you do it just straight on, it doesn't want to cut. But just slight, you can just cut like crazy. Okay, but if you've never cut a piece of webbing, um, come up and give it a try when we're all done, just so you can see the difference. So you can tell, you know, this is this is how I cut this belt. How to, it's easier if you have somebody holding the other side. Because <laughs> remember, when it's, on, it's, in. Be it's usually tight. So you've got so it's got pressure. It's not me just holding it in the air trying to do it one with one hand. So, um, so we're gonna now go to wheelchair securements, and I again I always start with safety first, and this is where I talk about projectiles. If you have anything on your bus that is sitting loose. Um, I've seen stuff on people's dashes, uh, you know, that just don't think nothing of it. They just throw that stuff up there. Every single thing on that bus in an accident is considered a projectile, mm -hmm. okay? Um, and you may not think that it has any weight to it at all. You know, it's a little Kleenex box. 
Kleenex boxes, yeah, they have sharp edges. You ever been hit in the face with a Kleenex box at 30 miles an hour? It will break your skin, okay? Or something, let's say, real severe. What if we forget to leave one of these unslipped from the floor or it's not in a bag or it's not secure? You ever been hit with one of these? <laughs> I'm here to tell you it's going to knock you out because this is a solid piece of metal. And it is heavy. This thing's weigh like four pounds all by themselves. And that is not going to flex when it hits you. It's going to knock you slap out and cause some severe injuries. So even when we're talking about something as light as a Kleenex box mm -hmm. or something that has some weight to it, um, cans of sprays, um, you know, um, drivers sometimes will collect things that their kids give, you know, the kids give them these little cute little things. That's all gray and sweet. They don't belong in your bus. If it is not secure, then it's just not. And in an accident, it's going to hit somebody. And I know as drivers, we would prefer to hit us or our monitor versus our child, but still, you want to take that risk. What if it knocks you out? You're driving the bus. That's a, that's a big problem. Okay, so please make sure that as you're doing your inspection stuff, remember projectiles are part of your safety feature. That would be even in like our pocket book. Oh, absolutely. They should be secure. If they're not strapped to something or, um, I don't, do you guys have the pocket covers for that barrier cover? Um, or they, uh, you have glove boxes in some of your buses. It needs to be secure somewhere. In the overhead emergency thing, leave it in your car and have your keys, put it somewhere. I know, I don't like to leave my purse in my car either. I don't think it does. But it needs, just remember that it's a projectile. And I don't know about you, but my purse could be a deadly weapon if it hits somebody. <laughs> okay? Um, let's, let's be serious. We got all kinds of stuff in that thing, right? Yeah. That thing might weigh more than this. Win money on what's my Okay? <laughs> um, so, so just remember that every single thing that is not secure is a projectile. So please be mindful of what you put on your dash. What's in an open just lane anywhere that's open? Um, once again, we should have no fluids and spray cans and stuff like that in our buses. It's just not the way it's supposed to be. If you're carrying a broom, it should be close to something, not just laying on the floor. If it is laying on the floor under your seat, that is still a projectile. What if that bus flips over? Now we got a stick. Okay, we got a stick. And I don't care how rounded it is. You ever been hit with that thing at 30 miles an hour? I'm here to tell you it's going to puncture something. Those, do you have your tire knockers? Ooh. <laughs> Secure. What Please. about book bags? The children's book bags? You know, there's not a whole lot we can do about book bags. That's what I was thinking. Um, every child on the bus has one of those. You know, and they won't let us duct tape them to them, so. <laughs> yeah. Well, I put command hooks up where my babies can hang their book bags up as they get on the bus, but. Where are you hooking them? In one of my empty wheelchair slots. In an empty wheelchair slot. On, on, a, on, on the wall? On the wall. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I, I, I'm going to say that's a no. I'm going to say it's safer on the floor in front of them than it is in a hanging spot. Maybe take mine down. Yeah, I'm I was going to say, well, I take my book bags away from a lot of my children because we got to, they'll get into them. So yeah, you don't. So we set them in the front of the, yeah, because they get into them and spread I, stuff everywhere. I had an idea, and this may be not a good idea, but I have a bungee cords that I, because I have a trash can and I put it around a bungee the seat strap to that, secure yeah. it. Mm -hmm. If you put bungee cords around and you have the carabiners uh -huh. where you clip them, and you put the book back I in it? That's what I'm I told you. I does that, does I that even sound safe? I, I don't even well, know. Well, I mean, it, it is secure. You know, to me, it's not floating around. But book bags <clears> have <throat> always, some kind of bag has always been on the school bus. Yep. Even when, in the old days, when they just had a strap around their books and they did it. And they were placed on the floor at their feet in front of them. That is the safest place for them. Why do they wear them? Don't, 
If they wear their book bag on their back, Just first of all, especially you're probably strapped somewhere, so then they're sitting like this, mm -hmm. right? But it doesn't. But that's not safe for them. Um, and if they're not strapped in at all, because maybe that child doesn't have to be in this, there's nobody in front of me in the seat that's strapped, so I can just let them sit on the seat, okay? But if their backpack is there, all right, then they are they have removed themselves from compartmentalization because now their face is how close to the seat in front of them? Their that's their head. How close to the seat in front of them? We have removed compartmentalization. It is meant for uh, for them to be able to move that full length. So if they're sitting halfway because their backpack's back here, then they we, we're removing compartmentalization, which is a safety issue. We always recommend they take them off. Put them away. They can wear them on the front. And you're saying not to put them on the floor. No, they can put them on the floor in front of them, but not at behind the driver's seat. Yeah, like okay, if they're if the yeah if the yeah directly in front of them if they're if you're doing that up by the driver's area even behind the driver's seat what happens when you stop really fast where are all those book bags going to go toward the driver on the floor towards the driver or in the step wall area that is just because it's our regular door does not mean that we're not going to use that in an emergency situation and now we have created a spot we cannot use that door now. Because you can't get to it. Because it's got all these fat that are falling down. Okay, and it's going to cause some of the injury while we're trying to step all over and trying to get out there. Okay, so directly in front of them on the floor, it keeps them in that area that's close to them. Um, you're always going to have exceptions to every single rule. Always just remember that. You know, like children, we, we have an exception for every rule because we have unique children. You know, they're not all the same, they're very unique. So um, if you have, all, if you have any questions at all, always <coughs> pick up your radio, pick up your phone, and ask. And I defer to you, Alita. <laughs> okay, so wheelchair securements. Um, this is a wheelchair securement. Mm -hmm. This is not for the passenger. This is for the chair. It, it, wheelchair securements went in 1991 from aisle facing to forward facing because they determined at that time it would be safer in a crash test for you for the centrifugal force to be on your body as you're facing forward, pulling you front and back instead of trying to pull you from the side because our bodies are not meant to make that movement. Okay, so that's when we flip forward. So we have a seven point tie down, seven points, all right? Four is for the chair. This has nothing to do with the passenger, the four, or for the chair itself. We have to make sure that chair does not move, period. It, do you have any electric wheelchairs? Yes. yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Electric wheelchairs are supposed to have extra straps. Do we, do we have that? Okay. Electric wheelchairs have six, not four. I like that we do not have six. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. I was going to say go. Either six tie downs or you, the brand new system because this, you know, these original chairs, okay, this, and this one does not have the little red, notice how there's no red markings on it, because this is an old chair that I just used for demonstration. Um, some newer chairs have the little red brackets that tell you, hey, hook me here. Mm -hmm. All right, that makes it so much easier, doesn't it? Yes, it does. Unfortunately, all of our chairs don't have that, okay? Um, and electric chairs don't have that. And some of those electric chairs are really <coughs> hard to tie down because they don't have a spot to do it. Now, some of our electric chairs do have that. Yeah. Yeah. Mine yeah. They, they have that because they're new. Yeah. Right. But an older one or the scooter style, and there is a special tie down for a scooter style. I do know that. Post. Yeah, that wraps the, where the straps actually have triangle um, D hooks, and they wrap around that post, and you still use tie downs that you look to that because there's no places to hook on that on that base um, because we have to have four tie downs the front two are meant to hold it down but to control the shift because even in the old, new style wheelchairs we still have that rotating front wheel so we have to control the shift so therefore they are to be outside of your front wheels 
fronts are always outside of your front wheel. We want a 45 to 60 degree angle from the floor. Again, if you have a very small wheelchair, it gets very difficult to get that angle sometimes, mm -hmm. okay? Sometimes you have to move it, um, and my platform doesn't allow that too much shifting, but sometimes you have to move it to the extra piece of track in front, you know, just to get your angle right. Why? Because you have track seating, so it makes it a lot, yeah, it makes it much easier. But the ones, but you have two rows of them, and that's because on the front side, they're supposed to be on the outside of the wheels, okay? Because we're control holding down, but we're controlling that left to right shift. On the rear, they're always in the inside of the wheels, because that is our main sock to the floor, okay? Now, some of you, this is Q-string. Um, there is Q-string, there's two manufacturers in tight end. Um, and we sell them both, Q-string and Sherlock. You have one versus the other, you probably have both. We have both. Yeah, that's what I thought. But on your bus, if you have Q-string, you better have all Q-string. If you have three, four wheelchair positions, every single one of them needs to be Q-string. Or every single one of them needs to be Sherlock. If we have Q-string tie downs, your shoulder belt and lap belt need to be Q-string. Now these companies have merged, but they have not tested cross-tested equipment, okay? Which means that if you have Q-string, and I have a couple Q-string straps, and I have a Sherlock strap, and my shoulder belt is a Sherlock, and I have an accident, who is liable? Mm -hmm. Your county and you. Because you have mixed that equipment, and, the, and Sherlock nor Q-string will stand by that. Because yeah. it's not tested that way. On the electric chairs, where would we put the extra set? On the rear. So four on the rear? Four on the rear, yeah. To keep it from going. And that is because of the weight difference. Um, the weight on the electric wheelchair, can, depending on how much extra equipment, can have like up to, it can weigh up to 300 pounds by itself. Okay? These straps weren't originally designed to hold that. Now they do have brand new kits that are made where you can only do four because they have um, bumped up the, um, the weight on these so they'll hold up to 600 pounds. Okay. Well, on so, the electric chairs, because yeah, the kid that I had last year had an electric, he has a brake on it. And I mean, he sets that brake when he gets stopped. Is that? You should, you're always supposed to set the brake. No, I mean, it's, a, it's not just a, it's, there's, like not on his wheels, it's a it's a hand brake that he sets that actually cuts the electricity off. Right. Because he does that. He has to start it back up when we get to the school in the afternoon. Uh -huh. yeah, but it still sure. has to be strapped down. No, yeah. I mean I'm yeah. strapping it down, but I'm saying yeah. would it need would it need the six yeah. straps? It's, it, because it doesn't it's have anything to do related. with the fact that it's powered up or powered down. <clears throat> okay. It's the weight of that chair. So okay. where do the other two go? On the rear. On the rear. Uh, you put them right next to it. And they and hook into the same red And you hook. can hook them into the same red hook if there's red hooks, yes. Okay. Yeah. Are they still on the out inside? It's still on the inside. The inside. You're, just gonna, you're just gonna stack them two next to each other. Like they'd be like this. Yeah. You'd pull them over kind of each other. Yes. Mm. Um, try to, um, and again, we, you know, look at them individual and see, and see what you have. Because some the older older electric wheelchairs they weren't really that heavy. They were just a little motorized chair. But this new stuff that has all this specialty stuff on it and stuff, you know, you know, you can hear your lift going. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, that's telling you that that chair probably weighs in excess of 500 pounds by itself. So we need six. Plus, now you're adding then the weight of the the, the, the child on top of it. Um, so you want to make sure that that chair is not going to move, okay? Um, another note on those heavy wheelchairs, when you're loading them on your lift, which y'all should be doing this with all wheelchairs, that wheelchair goes all the way to the back, to the back. It's not in the middle of the lift, okay? It goes all the way to the back. Um, some of them have the kick plate on them where you can, it'll stop. Some of them don't. So just make sure you get it as far back as possible because we do have a wheelchair that's so heavy that it's broke the lift. Um, we've had two lifts broke because of heavy wheelchairs. But when they're out there on the front <coughs> edge in the middle, it's putting it more strain 
Okay, because I mean, you have it out here, so it's pushing down as you're going up. It's so a difference of looking here. something here or reaching out here and yeah. looking mm -hmm. something. And make sure they How turn much off. more of a strain is that on you if I'm looking it on here versus yeah. lifting it next to my body? It's the same thing for that lift. Mm -hmm. Its arms are extended way out and it's trying to lift that high. You know, with all of that extra weight. Pedro, so, I. I a long time ago, they used to tell us not to let them drive on the lifts and, you know, we we're supposed to disengage them and pull them on, but now we've gone to letting them drive on. Is that still okay? I let them drive on if, they, uh, if they're good at driving the okay. wheelchair, yeah. Because we have some that they're so used to it, they put it in the right. They can, lot they can do it time. better than we can. Right, yeah. that's what I'm saying. They, no matter what, all of them are to be powered down. When they're right, on the lift and stuff. Good. Right. And they're all to be backed on. Right. Yeah. And nobody, nobody is on the lift ever to step on the platform. Is all, all our wheelchairs got the hooks on the back? No. No. What, what, what are we hooking them? We'll, we'll show you. Okay. We'll talk about that in just a second, okay, if they don't have hooks. Okay. All right. So, uh, projectile, please make sure that this is secure. Um, you guys leave yours hooked in the floor? All right. So. If yours, if yours are hooked in the floor, you've got them set, you know the same wheelchair goes in that same spot. You should only have to do that one time. However, every day when you're going through that bus, you should be doing this. Yep. Okay. And, and who is cleaning the track in your floor? We do. We do. All right, now this is what I'm telling you. If um, what builds up in that track? John. Everything. Yeah. The dust from everybody's shoes walking on the bus. The moisture from the ground is wet because we just have just a little bit of dew in Georgia in the morning. <laughs> right? So we're picking up, then they're picking up the dirt and stuff, and then they're walking on the bus, they're stepping their feet, and all of that is just laying there and then it falls down in the track. So today, um, Johnny's been riding every day, we put him in the same spot every day, and today we have to pick up Jack. Jack has a different wheelchair. I need to move my tie downs. Can I move my tie downs? Or is enough. my track? So, so clogged up because I haven't cleaned it. Um, that is that is your responsibility. Would it be great if the tech to every to every 28 days or whatever that bus is in took the air hose to it? Yeah, you can ask. But it's ultimately your responsibility to make sure because that track is part of your safety equipment. Remember the track is part of your safety equipment. So if the track is dirty and I can't move this, then that's on me. Because if I get a different wheelchair, or maybe it's Johnny today. Dang, Johnny's parents just got a check and they just bought Johnny a new wheelchair. I now I have to readjust all my straps because now to get the right angle, I need to move them because his wheelchair is a little bit bigger. <coughs> or maybe it's a little bit smaller, whichever it is. You need to make sure you can move your uh, restraints in your track. And that the shoulders track you usually don't have a problem with because not a whole lot of stuff just sticks up in the air. But it does. Y'all ever shut your ceiling fans off in your house? Yeah. Is it amazing how much dust can land on a ceiling fan that moves constantly? I never shut mine off except for cleaning. Mm -hmm. So they go all year long. It completely amazes me how much dust can build on one of those blades mm -hmm. when it's constantly moving. But it does. And remember, there's a lift in that track. So even your shoulder track can get a buildup in it. So I suggest you take a brush and just hit that every once in a while. Just, you know, just brush it out. Just so if you have to, you can move those restraints, that shoulder restraint. Because you never know when you may have to adjust it for a child or a different chair. Because if, if it's a different chair, then they're gonna be sitting in a higher, lower, or maybe a little further forward or a little further backwards. And you may have to adjust that. Because the shoulder strap doesn't do any good if it's here, right? He's gotta be behind the shoulder, right? Okay. Yes, ma'am. This is kind of for Pedro. Is Pedro, could that be something we could do, like when we turn our bus in for service, to ask for mechanics to Yeah, I'll track? ask Clay about that because I do prefer for the tracks to be blown. Yeah. Um, even if you park at home, take your leaf blower to it. Yeah. I mean, don't ever use a water hose. No, I, use, uh, I use my sh uh, that hand tears bag. Up the bus faster than a vacuum. Yeah, a vacuum. Yeah, That's yeah, what I use. A little, little, little handbag. Or yeah. Yeah, yeah, that works. Or vacuum because, them out. Yeah. But yeah, sweeping them, I had found, you ended up with pieces of the broom in them. You did. So um, 
Yeah, well, I'll talk to the plan plan. about that. <coughs> they, and, they can't do that here. And it just means something like we put on our, our paper surface, you know, yeah. blow track out or something. Maybe. Yeah. That just makes it easier. Okay, so um, anyway, walking through your bus every day, just just tap it with your foot. Um, I, again, I won't mention county's names, but I was at a county, and um, they I, I said, well, let's walk out to one of your special needs buses and just check it out. I said, oh, now do you leave those in the floor all the time? He was like, yeah, we always leave them in the floor. It makes it easier. It's the same one, and I walked right up and did this, and it came right out. Was it locked? It wasn't locked because there was a little bit of dirt in the track, a little bit of buildup, which did not allow it to completely lock down. This little lever right here, if it is up, it is not locked. Okay, it has to be down all the way. And as we're talking about these levers, you do not have to lift this up to put this in the track. Right? Right. right. You just simply sit it in and, and slide, slide it. it. This is for removing only. Or if you're trying to shift it, you have to pull it up to release the lock. But if you, this is even up, just even just a little bit, if it is not flush, then that is not locked. And in a <coughs> emergency situation, that is going to be the first thing that comes out. So then we have something attached to the chair, right? And but it's loose. What do you think is going to happen? It's going to get somebody, and that's going to hurt. Um, before we start doing actual tie down, some they have made multiple, multiple changes over the years to tie down because we all know we used to have those. Oh my gosh, those ratchets! ratchets. <laughs> <laughs> Did we not those ratchets. Those ratchets, right? Oh my gosh, they were so hard to use. So then we went to these automatic retractors. Okay, um, they are meant to do this. All right, some of your retractors you may or may not have. Do you still have some with cranks? Mm -hmm. Okay, because I want to talk about cranks because it's important. If you have a retractor with cranks on it, please note that the retractors are made as the bus goes down the road, even once you have it hooked up in the, in the bus shifts, just because we know they flex a little bit going over the tracks and bumps and stuff. It is made to continually do this. Mm -hmm. To continually tighten it for some reason, that chair gets a little loose just from driving. Okay? So, if they're made to do that, in stating that, I say to you, those cranks on the side are only meant to, once you put that up, if for some reason you feel like those, this belt has this kind of slack in it, okay, if you can't make it do this and retract, then go ahead and crank it once. But I beg of you, do not have those things tight and reach down there and crank all those things. Because here's what's going to happen. I had a county, spent $500. Why? Their driver cut the straps. Why? They cranked them so hard they would not release. And they could not get the wheelchair out. If for some reason, what your wheelchair, and maybe it doesn't have cranks, but maybe it locks, and you cannot get it loose, this red button is not releasing your belt like it 